I'm gonna regret this, aren't I? <laughs> So recently I quote retweeted the first page, I want to say, of the really old selection uh, TV show that never was. And I said, please tell me that wasn't a real script, dear God. <laughs> and clearly it was a very real script because one of my mutuals on Twitter sent it to me. So Laura at Bookies and Cookies sent me a link to the script. This was the pilot that preceded the above mon monstrosity as she said it and I am going to read it and react to it on camera. I've never read it. I haven't even opened this link yet so I'm not even sure what is going to pop up and I am quite nervous. So I'm a huge fan of the selection and I feel like I probably would have watched the selection show if it had ever aired and I probably would have been extremely disappointed because from what I've seen it just looks really bad like really 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 bad like the worst possible outcome of a of a selection show it just it was hot garbage and I love the selection the selection is one of my favorite YA series I think it's absolutely incredible I think it's way better than people give it credit for and I feel like I could probably write a much better script than these people wrote so we're gonna see if that's true I have a cup of lukewarm hot chocolate that has been sitting here as I wait to figure out what I'm gonna film and then I remembered that I had this script and I'm just so excited to read it. <laughs> okay let's dive in. This is a selection pilot written by Elizabeth Kraft and Sarah Fain and I'm sorry to those two ladies I'm sure that you are talented however I have very low expectations for this script and I'm sure you're not even watching this. I mean if you are, hello, hi, no offense. So I'll just read you um, part of this. So this is America's voiceover as the camera pans over um, Ilya and she says long ago this land was divided into many countries, the United States, Canada, Mexico, many others. And it seems pretty boring up until here. And then she says the history books say that in the late 21st century, the nations of the East brought war against the nations of the West. Countless millions died. This script is very, very strangely written. I've written a lot of scripts. I've taken um, both a uh, creative writing class and a screenwriting class. So I've written quite a few different scripts for those classes and this is a pretty bad script so far. It's not very well uh, formulated or formatted and it's just weird. <laughs> so really it's just a voiceover by America for like way too long um, and it's a lot of exposition. Oh so much exposition. Oh my god the entirety of like the beginning of the novel is told in exposition of her basically just saying like talking about how everything ended up this way, what the cast systems are, what cast she's in. It's bad. Um, she says, I am a five, a member of the artist cast, and my name is America. Oof. Okay, so here is the description of America Singer, whom we all know to be about, what, 16 or 17 in the books? I want to say 16. I can't remember. I just recently read these books. I should know this. <laughs> but basically it says, America Singer, 22, that's only two years younger than me, 22, red hair flaming down her back. America has the voice of an angel and the mane of a goddess. Mane is spelled incorrectly. She stands with her sister, May, 20. May is 20. This is already garbage. I could like stop here and just tell you guys this script is trash. It's just bad. Who plays the violin while America sings? Their mother Magda accompanies on a grand piano. May, while pretty, is no competition for America. And though Magda was once beautiful, time has taken a toll. America, May, and Magda's clothes are a stark contrast to those of the wealthy ladies surrounding them. The colors are duller, the fabric coarser, the style more homemade than high fashion. Oh God. <laughs> this, if this is any idea of what is to come, it's just going to be really bad. Oh gosh, the idle small talk between 
these two wealthy ladies is just so tedious. It, it's, I, uh, mm. The selection is just the most romantic way for the prince to find a bride. Oh gosh, I would have scraped my eyeballs out of my skull at this point if this had become a real pilot. Oh my god. I love how the wealthy ladies that are just having this idle small talk are engaging in even more exposition that we didn't get in America's exposition. She says, Think of it, every young woman in Ilia enters her name in a lottery. Then one lucky girl from each province is chosen to move to the palace and be courted by the prince. Imagine having your name drawn, knowing it was random chance or even fate. Who talks like that? Who says that kind of stuff? No one. I, I can guarantee you, no one talks like that. Oh my gosh. The other wealthy lady is like, sometimes I forget that you're a three, Meredith. Oh my god. I feel like, I don't know if this would be trash or if it would be like enjoyable trash. You know how some things are just so awful that they're almost enjoyable oh my gosh it's common knowledge among we we twos we twos that the so-called lottery is just to appease the lower castes there's nothing random about it hardy hardy <laughs> and ashlyn oh gosh this is just bad this is not not good oh here we go here's another character description jasmine grantham 19 beautiful in a fragile way. She stands across the party with her parents, the host of the party. Oof. Oh my gosh, I love this. Jasmine is the clear choice. Best family, best connections. Wealthy lady number three. Best nose job. Oof. This is great. When was this when was this written? Hold on. I forgot to mention that. I feel like I can't it doesn't say when this was written, but I want to say probably 2013, 2012. Who knows? Who really knows? I don't. <laughs> okay, 2013. I'm pretty sure that this is 2013, possibly 2012. <laughs> The dialogue in this script continues to be the most stiff and unnatural dialogue I have ever read. It's just, it's embarrassing. I'm like, I'm so not surprised that this was never made. Like, that there are scenes that you can watch from, like, I'm guessing the first episode, the, the pilot or whatever, but they're so bad. It's so bad. Everyone is like, everyone is like the opposite of what their character actually is. It's but I like how they aged them up, and yet their dialogue is still so childish. It's like even more childish than the actual young adult novel's dialogue. <laughs> I love how they just like say things so plainly as if the audience is an idiot. And May is like, I can't help that I was born in the artist cast. One cast above him. And they're talking about a server that told America that she can't steal the food at the party. So, I mean, I would steal the food. However, May's dialogue, really bad. <laughs> and again, with like the dialogue that is just so plain and like so just like kind of just telling the audience exactly what is going on, America says, the caste you're born into determines your trade, not your value as a person. How would you feel if you'd been born an eight, a social outcast? Not because you're not smart, not because you're a bad person, just because you had the bad luck to be born in the lowest of the low. And then May says, all I know is, unless I get into the selection, I'll be stuck as a five, struggling forever. Oh, here we go. Here's Aspen. Um, I think there's a character description of him. As May heads off, the young man America was watching moments ago walks over, now carrying firewood. This young man is Aspen Ledger, 25, a six. Aspen is strong, smart, and bears the burden of supporting his entire family, which is true. However, he's not 25. They've aged him up literally like eight years, maybe even more than that. I, no, eight years, right? Five plus three, eight. He's like 17, right? This is 
ridiculous. I really don't understand the need to age up the, the characters. Like, I get it. They probably hired, like, much older actors. So they're probably, the actors were probably, like, 25 to maybe, like, 30. But, like, I like how this is one of the only shows that they ever were like, yeah, we should age them up. With, like, the selection is not nearly as, like, you know, explicit as other books that have been adapted into TV have been, like Gossip Girl, they were just like, yeah, let's just make them the ages that they are in the books. Why not? Who cares? They're sophomores in high school or whatever. Freshmen, sophomores? I don't remember. But yeah, let's just keep the ages, even though like that should have probably been aged up a little bit. But no, The Selection, one of the most tame young adult novels out there, we're gonna age it up eight years. It's, it's no big deal. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we're finally getting some like King Clarkson, Queen Amberly, Prince Maxon sort of action. So King Clarkson is, de is described as being in his late 40s. Uh, Queen Amberly is in her 40s and Prince Maxon is 25, handsome and regal. It looks like they're... <laughs> for <laughs> it looks like that while Gavril is uh, announcing the names of who's been chosen for the selection, it seems like from the names that he has said that there aren't any of the girls that were mentioned in the books, which is a little weird. I don't know if that was intentional or if they just didn't care. I'm not sure. But America's name has been called and it's very different from the books. As you know, like America really doesn't want to be in the selection and so she kind of has to be persuaded by her boyfriend Aspen and her parents and her sister to uh, put her name in for the selection and then she finally does and she's like I'm not gonna be called it's not gonna be a big deal but then her name does get called and in this one it seems like sh her she didn't put her name in willingly it seems like someone else put her name in for her because she's very upset and even before this she's like saying I, I didn't even enter the selection, so how would I get picked? And so this is very interesting. Oh my god! Okay, here's an interesting description. So, like, in the books, um, after she gets selected, America does go up to the treehouse to talk with Aspen. And I'm pretty sure, is that when they break up, I want to say? And she gives him the money that she saved. I want to, I don't remember. I feel like that's what happens in the books. But that's kind of similar to what's happening in the script. And here's an interesting and slightly off-putting description. Uh, it says, Aspen kisses her again. It's as if they're trying to devour each other. I hate that. I hate it. And I can picture it in my head. And it's awful. Oh, <laughs> I just screamed because I'm pretty sure that there's a kind of sex scene in this, even though, as you know, in the books, like the whole purity thing is kind of part of the world building of like, you can't have sex before marriage or whatever. Um, and <laughs> it's also in the show and <laughs> it says... It's basically, they're, they're still up in the treehouse and America begins to undress and it says, as America's nightdress falls to the floor, Aspen can't take it anymore. He kisses America's face, her neck, breath ragged, then, ooh, this is poorly written. <laughs> um, and then Aspen says, there, there are other things we can do, dot, dot, dot. Oh gosh. And then the description is as Aspen lips continue to travel the length of America's body and he melts out of frame. Oh gosh. This is just not looking good. It, it seems like America finds out that Aspen joins the army before she actually goes off to, um, to Prince Maxon and the selection. So that's really interesting because she does not know that before going in the books, she finds out once she sees him at the palace and is like, oh, well, you're here. <laughs> I feel like that's not a thing in the uh, books where soldiers aren't allowed to have wives or girlfriends or anything. I feel like that's not a thing. Hmm, I'm not sure. 
<laughs> I love this. Okay, so now America's at home and she is going to be taken for the selection. And it says, reveal Sylvan Santos, 30s, gay, wearing a perfectly tailored jacket adorned with the royal emblem, sitting opposite Magdan and Mylan. Which I'm guessing Mylan is her dad? That's not his name in the books. That's weird. But I love that he that this guy is described as being 30 and gay. <laughs> like, <laughs> 2012 was a weird time. Okay, so it seems like America has finally been taken and she's met another girl named Ashley. They're the only two on the train. And I'm pretty sure something similar happens in the books but really i don't think any of this totally matters yet i love how ashley's like the competition is going to be vicious my mother heard stories about the last election lies blackmail threats don't you see we're enemies every girl wants to be the one to marry the prince <laughs> It's the weirdest thing. Why do characters talk like this in this script? It's just, it doesn't make sense to me. That's not how people talk. That's not how you write a script. It's just really bad. It's really bad. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my gosh, there's like actual gunfire and like they have to get down on the ground. It's chaos. This does not happen in the books. Oh my gosh. It's like they literally ramped up everything to a 10 wow they were really trying to go for those ratings they were really trying to get them oh my gosh as the gunfire is going like this she it says america sees a guard go down his gun skids across the floor if america can just get the door open she can almost reach it <laughs> as if america is gonna go full rambo on these guys it's like <laughs> It's almost like they wanted America to be kind of like Katniss. She seems to kind of have that sort of like dry apathy, you know, towards everything. And like, she's going to get this gun and like going to shoot down all the criminals. And it's like, she's not Katniss, guys. She's just not. And she's not like that in the books either. Like she is like, she can be kind of dry at times, but she's not necessarily like, that's not like her personality. Like she's just kind of quiet and like I don't see her as this like Katniss sort of character because she's not. Oh here we go here, here's Lucy 19. Um, Lucy's one of her maids and we stand Lucy she's awesome. Okay so America ends up getting knocked out by this can of gas and she wakes up and she's at the palace and she meets Queen Amberly and she, Queen Amberly basically asks her to lie about what happened on the train. And that doesn't happen in the books either, but it's kind of in the same vein of like, this is what it takes to be a queen. And we'll understand if you want to leave, but you have to keep this a secret. And America, for some reason, even though she's wanted to go this entire time, she didn't even decide, like she didn't even make the choice to enter into the selection. She's still like, I'll go this is great I'm gonna stay like that doesn't make any sense for the character that they've sort of started to create with this pilot like America in the books actually like made the choice to join the selection and like put her name into the lottery and stuff like that but in this one, it's like she didn't make any of those choices. She didn't want to be in the selection. She didn't even want her name in the lottery. So why would she now after being attacked by rebels and like almost killed, why would she want to stay in the selection? If she, if she now knows like the risks of being in the selection and she didn't even want to be here in the first place, why didn't she leave? It doesn't make sense. This thing does not make sense. Oh, here's Celeste Newsom. She raises her hand. A 24 year old two, Celeste is smart, beautiful, and conniving beneath a friendly facade. Me and Celeste are the same age, so I will be Celeste. They're, okay, so now it's a smash cut to the internal scene of the rebel camp, tent day. Reveal Ashley, her mouth taped shut, her clothes filthy, bound to a chair in bare bones military style tent, two armed rebel guards stand watch. Ashley is not safe at home. So I guess it shows 
why America made the right choice by staying in the selection. Because when Ashley decided to go home, her kind of partner on the train, she ended up getting captured by the rebels. So that sounds rough. So that's interesting. Um, I don't know if that's necessary because for the with the books, the rebels are kind of like not even really given any sort of thought or <laughs> any sort of page time until like the later books. And I didn't really see too much of a problem <laughs> with that. Um, I don't think that they're the most important part of the selection. So, um, yeah. Okay, so now we have America who has, you know, slipped out into the outside of the palace and she's, I think she's in the gardens and that's the same in the books. She goes and walks around outside trying to kind of like gather her head and everything. And then she spies on, or I guess doesn't really spy on, but she ends up coming across King Clarkson and Prince Maxon. They're talking and she's hiding and he says, just remember the selection is about more than who you want to take to bed. We love that. And then when he walks away, Maxon realizes that someone is listening into their conversation and, um, <laughs> and America tries to run away, but Maxon is, you know, clearly not an idiot. And he says, I am, <laughs> I am Prince Maxon of Ilia. Lady America, you will stop and bow. <laughs> oh my god, I hate it already. That's not Maxon. Like, Maxon, okay, first of all, no. Second of all, never. Okay, so they're kind of talking about why America is out sneaking around at night. And she tells him that she wanted to see the moon. It reminds her of home. And Prince Maxon is like, that's against the rules. You can't just be walking around by yourself. You might get shot. And she's like, I don't give a fuck. And, he, and she kind of like tells him everything that she thinks of him. Like, you're awful. Like, you don't know what like the real, real world is like. You were, you grew up in a gilded cage. And he says, <laughs> we know what you think of me. Let me tell you what I think of you. You are a willful, unappreciative yokel <laughs> who has no idea what it means to live in this palace. And you clearly don't have a romantic bone in your body. I love it. F Fiona, this random character, is like, what do you think he'll be like? Talking about Prince Maxon. And America responds, tall. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so they're meeting Prince Maxon. He's introduced himself and... It's the description says, suddenly royal staffers pour through the doors carrying hundreds of boxes of designer shoes. Every girl's dream, except America's, she couldn't care less. Because America isn't like other girls. America and Maxon meet again and he pretends like he hasn't, say he hasn't met her yet. And she apologizes and is like, don't we have to talk now? And he's like, I don't really feel like it. See you later. <laughs> I mean, that's not what he says, but it's basically what he says. Huh, that's interesting. So there's a scene where Celeste comes to America's room and she's like, I'm really sorry about how I acted today. I think we should be friends. And America's like, okay, that's really weird, but sure. And so they go on this walk and Celeste is talking to America and basically is like, you really need this, right? And she says, we can't leave a decision this important to a man. With a little strategy, we can ensure that you and I make it to the final six, to the elite. And America seems really put off by this. And she says, I won't undermine any girl here, Celeste, not even you. And then Celeste says, I misjudged you. It won't happen again. So it seems like Celeste will go back to being a bitch. I'm not really sure. Okay, so now they're doing the capital report, which is like a pretty big part of the books. And Gavril asks Prince Maxon, who among the ladies stands out so far? And Maxon says, I would have to say dot 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 Lady America singer wait, Lady America singer of Carolina for some reason I couldn't read that has made quite a first impression 
Which is so random because he totally, like, you know, blew her off the last time he saw her. So that's very strange. <laughs> oh my god. I love it. He says, she's so excited to be part of the grand tradition of the selection. This is truly her dream come true. <laughs> oh gosh. He's totally teasing her. That's, oh gosh. That's just oh, interesting. Okay. Ah! <laughs> okay. Okay. So now we're getting to this part that's not in the books, but it's kind of like the Capitol report is going on and so people are watching it and those people happen to be soldiers. Aspen is now a soldier. And so it says, a rowdy group of 30 soldiers watch the Capitol report. Among them find Aspen, his head shaved wearing ro royal army fatigues, his gaze is intense as he watches America. Soldier, hey Ledger, you know the hottie from Carolina? Aspen, never seen her before. <laughs> the hottie from Carolina like who says that oh my gosh okay so Celeste has kind of been a little sneaky and has been blackmailing some of the contestants of the selection and so I guess Queen Amberly has figured it out surprisingly fast and she <laughs> she um, comes up to Celeste and with you know these files these black files that somehow Celeste just has lying around and <laughs> Um, she calls her a stupid, presumptuous chit. This is the weirdest dialogue. Like, who says this? Also, Queen Amberly? No, Queen Amberly is not like that. It's very strange. <sighs> okay, so I've been reading a bit more of it, and it's just so boring and bad and not good. And basically, Celeste is kind of off the hook for what she did and Queen Amberly is like leave America Singer to me as if she's gonna take care of America Singer and like get rid of her in her own time or whatever very strange not the Queen Amberly I know not the one I stan and then Maxin is like kind of warming up to America a little bit. America's still not into it. He's figured out that she has a guy back home that she's in love with and Maxon kisses her anyway. I'm guessing kind of to persuade her against the guy that she really likes or liked at some point. And America's like, no thanks, not feeling it. And Maxon is like, well, I'm gonna have to send you home then, which is just so weird. Um, and then now America is proposing her deal with him, I'm guessing, because she wants her family to get the stipends that she's receiving. And, you know, they kind of told her, like, this is great. It's so great that you're there and giving us money and stuff like that. So I think this is her plan to kind of, like, keep getting her family money. Okay, so basically they make that deal and Maxon promises her that she will become one of the elite and America's like, your dad's gonna allow that. And he's like, he may not like it, but I assure you all decisions regarding the selection are mine and mine alone. Really, I want to just skip every single scene that includes any of the rebels because it's boring and really doesn't matter. And every single time that they're on screen, nothing happens and not like no actual like plot development happens when they're on screen. You could literally cut it and nothing would change. And we're very close to the end of the script. So we're going to skip all of that. And here's the Grand Salon night. And basically, it seems like something happens with America's wardrobe. It says, America enters her room to find her entire wardrobe laid out on her bed. Suitcases are scattered everywhere. America says, what's going on? Lucy tells her that it's the prince's orders. I'm guessing they're moving her to a different room. And that's all I can say. <laughs> that's all I know. And that's basically the end of the pilot. We end off with uh, Queen Amberly telling these soldiers that, you know, they have a lot of work to do and it's very important and all that. And we end off with Aspen looking off into the distance. And that is the entire script for the pilot of the selection. And honestly, it was not as bad as I thought it would be, but it was still trash.
from the videos that I've seen, which I'm guessing are from the second episode, like the episode after the pilot, I was expecting more, like, not cutting edge, but just like, you know, more explicit stuff. And we didn't really get that, which is fine with me. I don't really want any of that stuff, especially with the selection being like not like that in the books. And it was much more tame than I expected it to be, but it was also so poorly written. Just so bad. The dialogue is awful. The characterization is bad and it's not, you know, anywhere close to the books. And the weird aging up of all the characters. I know that this was kind of meant to be a CW show, but wow, it was bad. I hated it. It was awful. Um, please don't ever read it. It's just really bad. And I'm so glad that it was never made. I wish it was made into a TV show though. And I really wish that it would like stick to the book because I think it'd be a really great TV show, honestly. And I think it'd be super interesting. I think a lot of people would like it. It's fun. People love sort of like bachelor type of shows and like dating shows. People love that stuff. I they, they mean, people still love that stuff. So I feel like it'd do really well as a TV show, but it might just be too old to turn into a TV show at this point. But I'm really glad it wasn't turned into this TV show because that was really bad and very 2012. It's just very 2012. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I've been filming for an hour, which is not something that I typically do. And we're gonna see how I can edit this down into something more manageable because, oh my gosh, that was a lot of reading and talking and just reading absolute garbage. So if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also go ahead and follow my Instagram, Twitter, and Goodreads, and I will see you all in my next video, and hopefully I won't be talking about the selection. Bye!